Coming up on today's episode of Airborne on Man. Ehang debuts in-city demo flight for commercial sightseeing operations. The world's first ISO-approved drone safety standards are announced. And a news copter crew believes their aircraft was struck by a drone. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. Yi Hang and property developer Heli Chuang Zin Real Estate Company are partnering together to build the world's first commercial in city sightseeing UAM route. This is a major milestone as Yi Hang prepares for the launch of commercial operations of its autonomous flying taxis. On November 30th, two passenger grade AAVs of the two seater E Hang 216 model performed simultaneous flight demos, vertically taking off from and landing at Heli Tian Center in Guangzhou on the center's opening day. The demos took place four months after E Hang announced it had selected Guangzhou as its first UAM pilot city. E Hang and Guangzhou plan to establish a low altitude air transportation network that shuttles passengers and cars. The pilot program enables Ehang to test more flight routes and Verta ports before moving into passenger grade commercial operations. To date, Ehang has safely conducted over 2,000 test flights. Now it's time for today's Unmanned Minute. Drone Aviation Holding Corporation closed on a merger with Com Sovereign Corporation to become Com Sovereign Holding Corporation. The company will focus on supplying Com Sovereign's existing global wireless carrier customer base with new infrastructure technology, including industry leading carrier backhaul capability and a 5G NR connectivity for fixed and mobile aerial applications. Drone responders released new research findings designed to help improve efficacy and safety surrounding public safety drone operations. Among the conclusions, they uncovered the growth to maturity of many existing public safety UAS programs remains inhibited by a lack of funding, resources, and formalized standards surrounding remote pilot training and flight operations. Preliminary results from a design thinking workshop organized by the International Respond Drone Project indicate at first responders view the constant provision of real-time information and crisis situations as one of the most valued benefits arising from the usage of drones in disaster management missions. The workshop held in Thessaloniki last month was attended by representatives from first responder organizations and industry partners of the Respond Drone Consortium. The North Carolina Department of Transportation's drone program has earned another award, this time for the use of drones to deliver medical supplies and the positive environmental impact the initiative will have in the future. The Clean Tech Innovation Awards was organized this year to recognize and honor the individuals and organizations driving clean tech innovation and deployment in the Triangle region. The Research Triangle Clean Tech Cluster organized the awards program. Now back to the rest of the news. The world's first ISO-approved drone standards have been announced by the International Organization for Standardization following a 12-month period of consultation with drone professionals, academics, business, and the general public. This important first step is part of a wider deliverable by ISO, which is expected to trigger a rapid acceleration in the use of drones by organizations keen to reap the rewards of this transformative technology against a background of reassurance on safety and security within a new framework of approved regulatory compliance. The new standards include protocols on quality, safety, security, and overall etiquette for the operation of commercial drones, which will help shape future regulation and legislation. It's the first in a series of emerging standards for drones, with others due to address general specifications, product manufacture and maintenance, unmanned traffic management and testing procedures. The product manufacture standards for UAS, which are due to be established next year, will combine with the operational standards already published to establish a full airworthiness suite of standards for UAS. 
The crew of the KABC Air 7 HD news gathering helicopter made an emergency landing last Thursday after something struck the helicopter's tail. While no physical or visual evidence has been confirmed, the crew believes it was a drone that damaged the news helicopter. The helicopter was flying at an altitude of about 1,100 feet when the crew heard a pop, then a loud bang. Reporter Chris Christie told KABC at the time they did not know what hit them. However, after inspecting the damage, the crew said there was a possibility it could have been a drone. Christie also said the pilot had seen a flash of light, which could have been the red and green navigational lights on a drone. Whatever it was left a significant gouge on the horizontal stab of the helicopter, as well as a series of dents and scratches on other places of the aircraft. Thankfully, whatever caused the damage missed the tail rotor. The incident remains under investigation. And that's it for this week's Airborne Unmanned. Thanks for watching. Please click subscribe and check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.